Hi, I just wanted to say before the video starts that this is going to be like a new series that I'm doing. Um, you know, the, those other two videos I made where it's me sitting down with the face cam. Um, yeah, that, it might not seem like that much effort went into them. And to be honest, not much effort did go into them compared to any other YouTuber. But, you know, um, th this is just an easier way for me to make a video where it's just B-roll and a little dinky picture of me. And I like uploading. It's fun. That's why I'm doing this, just for fun. And But while I'm working on bigger and better videos, like I have a couple more little video essay things planned, I'd, I'd like to still upload stuff. And I thought quick little little reviews for some artsy films that you might not have heard of in a fashion like this would be fun to upload and easier for me to make. You know, it's it's less effort. And we all know how much people appreciate low effort content. So, so without further ado, this is a new series called Because I'm Better Than You, because, well, I'm better than you. Enjoy. Morris Peros is a film directed by director Alejandro. How do you even? Oh, one sec. Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu. Yeah, yeah, he was, he's directed by that guy. A anyways, film is about three stories. One is about a man living in poverty who uses dog fighting as a way to run off with his sister-in-law. The second one is about a professional model and her lover who had just left his wife and kids in order to start a new life with her. And the third and final story is about a hitman, old and withering and trying to reconnect with his estranged wife and daughter, whom he had lost contact with when he left them to go become a gorilla. Now, going into this film, I was expecting much more of the the first story, the dogfighting one, because up until seeing it, that was all I had heard about it, that was all I had seen about it. If you look up clips, almost any clip you'll find is from story A and none from story B or C, and even my uncle Chris, who had recommended it to me in the first place, would only talk about the first story. It reminded me of Pulp Fiction, how going into it at a young age, I expected a lot more of Sam Jackson and John Travolta shooting people, and not a whole lot of... Uh, Uma Thurman doing drugs and Bruce Willis boxing. But much like Pulp Fiction, I ended up liking what I got a lot more than what I had expected. And just like Pulp Fiction, it's told in a non-linear fashion. Which, for those of you who don't know what non-linear means, I'll play a very relevant clip from the film The Other Guys. I think the best way to tell the story is by starting at the end, briefly, then going back to the beginning, and then periodically returning to the end, maybe giving different characters perspectives throughout just to you know, give it a bit of dynamism otherwise it's just sort of a linear story just tell us what happened oh well, you're probably going to ask yourself at some point in this video what's the point of this movie why should i bother watching it well basically the idea of this movie is that three different stories that would normally have nothing to do with each other are all kind of brought together and connected by fate, a car crash, and a dog named Coffee, but more on him later. The film uses these three stories, and dogs in general, as a way of exploring love. I mean, the title translates to love is a bitch. I mean, at least according to this ugly ass YouTube thumbnail. But yeah, love is a bitch has two meanings. One, love is a bitch, it's awful, it hurts us. And love is a dog. I mentioned the dog Coffee earlier, and dogs in general are prevalent in all three stories. Dogs by nature are very loyal and loving creatures, and people can really easily abuse that just as we really easily abuse and take for granted love. And that's what the whole movie is about. It's about love and heartbreak and loss and joy and just, and just all the different ways we can hurt each other with it. It really is a tragic movie, and I've never seen such a heartbreaking movie with such beautiful visuals. 
And I don't just mean that it looks pretty, I mean the editing has a really nice pace to it. And it almost kind of tricks you into thinking that there's a lot more going on than there actually is. But yeah, I'm really glad I checked this one out and I'd give it a four and a half, five, uh, four and a half out of five. And if there's anything else I have to say is that I really, really fucking adore the final shot of this movie. The whole film is filled with great memorable shots, but that one really kind of left me speechless. Anyways, I'm Troy Mefford, and I like Amores Perros. Why? Because I'm better than you.